Hi, this is Matt Kendall, and today I'm speaking with Louise, with Louise Bowditch or Bowditch. Uh, Bowie, Bowie. Um, now, Louise did my IMT training in May of this year. It's currently recording on June the 12th, 14th. Bloody hell, lost two days. Um, 14th of June, 2021, during the Euros. Um, Louise did her training, and today we've been going through her case studies as part of doing the, the training with myself. You get about half an hour to an hour of my time afterwards to go through your case studies and also to answer any other questions that you might have regarding to IEMT. And that's, that's well, it's not free of charge. It's included within, within the training price. And uh, we're going to get Louise all certified today. Um, Louise has a background in clinical hypnotherapy and kinetic shift. Uh, she's a solution-based clinical hypnotherapist. And she also did do a previous IMT training in November of last year with a different trainer. And she didn't submit her case studies or becoming a practitioner that time. And she came to do a refresher course uh, with myself. So before we get into it, can you just tell us a little bit about your background in relation to the work you were doing and sort of who you were working with and your experience with, with therapy and how it brought you into IMT? Okay, so I qualified as a um, solution-focused uh, clinical hypnotherapist last year, and I'd already got my kinetic shift practitioner's uh, qualification. And when I started to sort of move in, I don't know, therapy circles, if you like, on Facebook, just to sort of, you know, make connections with other therapists, etc., I heard lots of people mention IEMT, and it sort of piqued my interest. I did some research, and... Um, I had a couple of sort of sessions with sort of, sort of mentoring sessions, I guess, with a couple of other couple of different people. And they were kind of saying that IEMT is a fantastic tool to have in a toolkit. And what I loved was the fact that it's kind of deconstructing how someone feels or how they are in order for them then to kind of move forward and go in the direction that they want to do so I loved it sort of practi practical application mm. um, from what I had heard and so that's why I wanted to train in it okay so you did your original training in November mm -hmm. um, but you didn't do your cases and stuff from then let me ask you how then did you find out about myself how did you come across me I think I had joined your Facebook group uh, Facebook group nice the um yeah, and I just was sort of keeping an eye on things and it sounded great. And I watched some of your videos. So I watched some of these interviews, which were very helpful yeah. and very informative. So, yeah, I kind of just realized that uh, in order for me to feel um, really ready to go and help people, I wanted to kind of consolidate my training. And yeah, and so here I am. OK, cool. So you did your first training in November. Um, then you came to do my training, uh, so it was like sort of seven months later or something. So you did it last month. Um, <clears throat> what was your experience like going through the training? So the things that I really want to sort of, uh, sort of discuss, like the structure of it, how I trained it, the content, uh, the practice sessions you were given, hmm. what happened before, so the materials were given before, and the help and support afterwards. So basically hmm. everything. Right, so basically, okay. so so just to take me through, what was it like, sort of before the course, during the course, after mm. the course? Well, I tried to get on the course the months earlier, but I wasn't able to. I had a family commitment, so um, I was kind of like badgering you, I think, perhaps to say, "Tell me when the next dates are." Tell me when the next dates are. Once I you'd confirm the dates, and I had got kind of like, "Yep, you're on the course," and I'd paid and everything. I then received emails guiding me through the process so to watch this video um you know to print off the handbook um yeah and so that so that was very straightforward mm -hmm. and then the course itself was very well laid out it there was a, a methodology in its structure which i found really helpful because having a framework for me personally helps me to learn better to retain mm -hmm. information and then to be able to recreate you know what what I've learned and sort of obviously then go out and, and help people so yeah it was great yeah no, and that's what I, I tried to do so I do what I call modular learning because when I first learned IMT it was kind of like 
quite confusing to, in many aspects. I didn't really know kind of what was going on. There was lots of different things, all these patterns, all these eye things. And so I, what I've tried to do is I've taken all this information and over the years, right, you do this here, you do this here. So everything gets broken down into a module. If this happens, do this. And if this happens, do that. Because so I think that a lot of people would do the IMT training and were, I was thinking how many people are actually using this with clients? You know, they might be using a bit, they might be, okay, think of a memory, they might be doing that bit, but that's like 5% or something of the whole, the whole kind of model. Um, so before the course I do, I have got preparation videos for you to watch about the patterns of chronicity and also to go through technical setups because now we're online. It's not just, you're not just turning up into my, you know, to my clinic. You've actually got to set yourself up in a way. Like when you're working with a client, they have to be set up in a certain way as well, you know, so you can, so you can work with them. Um, and did you find it good actually having the manual and the, the information beforehand to help you prepare for the course? Yes, yes. I mean, obviously, my situation was maybe slightly different to other yeah. people who hadn't hadn't done a course before because I knew what to expect. I sort of knew the principles, etc. Yeah. Um, but yes, it was it was helpful to have a manual that, that I could refer to and helpful to sort of refresh my memory by watching the video, etc. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So going through this for people who have no sort of concept of IMT anyway, I know you did a previous course, but going through the course as if you were going through it as a new, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of the tools and the techniques and the actual content of what you were learning and what it was like applying those techniques? Because I think there's 12 people on your course. I, I usually limit it to about 12 people. Um, and so what was it like? going through the course and applying it in the step-by-step -step process hmm. well what was great is that it was broken down into much smaller chunks or, or smaller chunks hmm. or sm sorry small chunks i should say so it was like bite size yes so you would explain a concept we'd ask a few questions there'd be a bit of discussion and then we'd go straight off and do some practice yeah and then we'd come back in we you'd ask some questions about how it had gone we'd share some you know information that, that, mm. that had happened or discuss what we've done in our practice session and then it was like we'll now go back in and do it do it again so there was um it was very easy sort of manageable sections to work on and then it built up so you, we started obviously at the beginning yeah <laughs> and then it's always a good place to start and then, and then the added, middle and the end yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah you know that, that old chestnut <laughs> um and then we kind of added to it and built up yes and so at, by the end of the training i did feel as though i had a very comprehensive um structure and plan to follow that yeah. was easy to implement really perfect yeah during the course itself um because some people if you don't know about what iemt does it's got different functions but essentially it helps to sort of not remove but reduce the impact of negative experiences essentially memories it helps to reduce down and incapacitate the ways of feeling negative and feeling negative emotions and it helps to change your way of being with the identity work so it literally updates who you are so you can respond as the adult you are and not the the identity imprints you might have had from childhood whatever it might be there are some other tools and techniques we do as well one about body language one about adding time onto stuff so join the practice session or join the breakout sessions um did you, well, did you experience anything yourself and what was it like? Did you see other people experiencing changes as well? And what was that like? Hmm. Yeah, so I were obviously worked with um, a few different people. I did, for some reason, uh, one particular participant and yes. I kept coming back together. So that was it. But it was interesting because yeah. what's happened now is that we built up a, a, a good rapport. We've actually yeah. had a session. Oh, great. You know, and, and caught up just the two of us. So that was really nice. Oh, so um, so it's, it was certainly um, it was certainly an enjoyable process. And we'll, we will be helping each other out and working with each other, I think, um, just sort of going forward. But yeah, no, it was great. We, we certainly discovered some things and, and helped each other out with the sort of the flow and the wording of it and made sure that we were addressing things in the correct way. I had a few shifts, you know, myself. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's 
all good. Cool. And what I tend to do as well is I do a lot of demonstrations. Um, and I, I don't know about other trainings because I haven't been to them for a long time. Was it good to see a lot of the things being demonstrated and do you take much from that as well? Yes, so, well, that was really helpful. That was really helpful to see uh, an experienced practitioner doing a live session in front of us, if you like, so that yeah. we could hear the the way that you ask questions or how you would interject and take something to a different place and then bring it back. That, that I found that very helpful, yeah. And what I do as well, um, if people don't know, I record the training and I then basically make that recording available to people who have attended so you can go back and, and watch specific and you know when you're watching a demonstration because a lot of people are watching it and trying to take notes and stuff and then if you go back and watch you'll probably pick up a lot of things as well so um I'd, when when i am training i like people to kind of watch the screen or watch me or watch what i'm doing rather than having to look in the manual or make notes and that's why i do record it and then obviously you can then go back and refer to it as many times as you like, you know, because it'll be there for, a, well, when I say forever, be there for a while um, mm. to do it as well. And that's what, I don't know if other trainers record it. I, I didn't obviously do it when it was live in one-to-one, -one, well, in a group work, in, in, you know, in, in real life, as it were. But certainly with it being online, um, recording, it's really simple and then just giving people access to it afterwards as well. So this time you did your case studies uh, and before we get to the case studies and what it's like applying techniques, how have you found the, the aftercare, the after support? So once you leave your training, because I know this, not just in IMT, but I know in a lot of places, once you finish the course, that's it. There's nothing sort of, to sort of follow on from that. Mm. And I don't believe in that because my job is to train people in this and to make sure not only do they get certified, but they continue using it because I know how good IMT is. So I'm, mm. I'm like the poster boy for IMT <laughs> to make sure people are using it. So what's it been like after in the sort of the community around IMT? Mm. Well, I think your community, because I was already in mm. your community before I did the training. So I find it really helpful. I, you know, I've, I've already watched a few um, of the lives and the um, videos that you've got sort of in the library. So they, they were always, yeah. you know, they have been helpful already. And then the community was already there. So I was I kind of already part of it to begin with. So mm -hmm. and it's carried on and it's nice to see questions come in because when someone posts a question, probably, I don't know, nine out of 10 of us go, oh yeah, that's a really good question. And I'm really grateful, grateful for the answer or some insight. So yeah, no, it's been, it's been very nice. And I think that community feel and that connection is important. Perfect. So you took this and I actually give people structured sheets. So I actually not just teach you the techniques, I teach you to use it with people. And that's something which was kind of missing from when I did my original trainings. It's like, how, how do I do a session? How do I structure a session? So when I do a two-day training, everything I teach on day one is what I do in session one. Everything I teach in day two is what I do in session two. And then basically I give you a flow chart, um, which you, you do have in that post pack, I assure you. Yes, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's basically it takes you from yeah, what you want to. <coughs> note to self Download look it. at the stuff from that sense so, yeah, so, look at the aftercare <laughs> look at the aftercare there's always a package and so um so i, I show you basically how i do the, the preform how i look through it how i know what i'm going to do and then how i apply it so what was it like actually going forward and applying imt i know you did two great case studies um so what was it like actually using with people because the people you used it with have no concept of IMT did they beforehand no no no, <clears throat> no they, they didn't have a, a clue and one of the people had well she was a serial therapist attendee wasn't she so so why don't you tell us what it was like to work with your your first case study what issues that she was having and basically how IMTs helped her hmm. so she had been to um or had a, a lot of other therapies before to help her overcome her severe spider phobia. And they obviously hadn't worked because she was, you know, See, still, you looking to, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. still looking to still looking to manage it. And so um, I, that 
kind of put a little bit of, um, I don't know, I was a bit concerned because I was wondering whether or not, like you say, uh, someone who's been and had a lot of therapy before, yeah, you know, am I just going to become another one on her list? You know, yeah. um, and but by all accounts and purposes, IEMT has really helped to address that issue for her. She's made lots of really positive changes since, during, and since, and I'm so pleased for her because it's clearly already bringing in you know changes has changed her life i think well because we say there's a lot of therapy she had a, a spider phobia and she'd had 50 sessions was 50 wasn't it five zero five zero yeah sessions of cbt on this issue and other hypnotherapy and some other stuff mm-hmm. and yet within two sessions so she was she would avoid going out and stuff wouldn't she, she wouldn't go into gardens or mm. stuff like that yeah Yes, her, um, her daily activities were severely impacted at times by her phobia, yeah. So with two sessions of IMT, she's able to what, to sit in people's gardens. She was able to do some gardening in her own house yes, that, that she yeah, hasn't that done for... Yeah. yeah, eight years. She hadn't done that for eight years. She so, she ha- so she hadn't done gardening in her own house for eight years. Well, mm. not in her house, outside her house. Outside her house. <laughs> yeah. It's just let her house go to a room. And so outside her house, she hadn't been able to do that because of this fear of spiders and insects and everything yeah. like that. And so as a result of the IEMT, she's able to go to friends' houses, enjoy their gardens, and her general worry and anxiety around this issue is much less. So yeah. overall, her life is much better as well, isn't it? An improvement, yeah. And it's impacted positively other elements and other mm. things that she was dealing with and so yeah I'm really pleased I mean she was a very engaged uh, client which I, again because of her history I was a bit concerned that maybe mm. she wasn't going to necessarily be as invested but she really was she mm. was uh, surprised at how it worked she was a bit yeah. gobsmacked on a couple of occasions and she's like well how the hell did that happen you know yeah. um, she was surprised when I picked up on something um, and then when I questioned her further and applied one of the techniques on that particular thing, she was like, you said that might happen and it's just happened. You know, it was, it was amazing. And I was so thrilled for her because, you know, I could see the impact that it was having. Yeah. So yeah, it was great. And let me ask you between the two sessions, so that when you do a case study, you do two sessions with two people and these are a week apart. Did you notice any actual physical and well, spiritual difference? Did you know any dif- notice any differences between uh, this client mm. between the sessions when she appeared for the second session, basically? Yeah, I would say she was calmer. Her mm. overall sort of demeanour was calmer. Yeah. And I think a bit more upbeat. There was a bit more energy about her. You know, she Absolutely. was, um, you know, she was, she was a really lovely person and, and uh, you know we could have a laugh and a bit of a giggle because yeah. that's part of my sessions. It's not all serious and yeah. you know doom and gloom. So, but she was, I would say she was a bit more effervescent. You know, yeah, it was like a little light had been shone on her. So it was really it's, nice to see. And what's interesting is because IMT is not about you know installing positivity or or uh, feelings. It's about incapacitating the negative feelings and these negative memories and experiences because feeling bad all the time takes a lot of effort, you know, it takes a lot of effort to do. And so once you start to incapacitate that, people just feel better. They feel more relaxed because they're not overthinking everything. They're living much more in the present as well because people who have been through bad stuff uh, they've got two things going on. They're thinking about all that bad stuff that's happened to them. Then they're thinking about all the bad stuff that's going to happen to them. And so once you start to work on on the stuff that's happened to them, they're not thinking about that anymore. And also, you know, we project our future through the lens of the past. Well, if our past is getting better, our future gets better by itself. Mm-hmm. And so I always find that clients become much more present um, without trying to become present, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, no, it, it was really lovely to see that shift in her. Yeah. 
and her optimism and her out positive outlook was much improved. Yeah. And that, and that comes because of not trying to guide them into thinking better. Again, if you, when you start to fix these issues which they have, they naturally project a more positive. But it's but it's based in sort of genuine positivity and not like this whole let's imagine a brilliant great big future and have a dream board and stuff. You know what I mean? It's it's not that kind of positivity. It's I can do this. I've actually, IMT shows you how far you've actually come by yourself anyway. So it, again, it's one of the patterns of chronicity. It's, you know, cause and effect. And a lot of people are living at effect. So basically life's happening to them and they don't have control. And when you teach people and show people how to take control back into their lives, it just makes them much more assertive and makes them much more confident in their own skills. Mm, yes, and I would say her confidence from what she was telling me that she was able to do. Yeah there was a, a calm confidence about her that yeah. she obviously hadn't been able to, you know, experience before. Yes. So that was really nice. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so let's talk about your second client a little bit. So what kind of issues was, were they experiencing and what kind of effect did IMT have on them? So um, she was struggling with events that had happened from her past that would keep coming to her mind, if you like, and she would rerun them, go through them, go over them, kind of, I suppose, micro-examine them, which would then be impacting how she was feeling in the now. Yeah. And uh, I suppose create some anxiety about the future as well, because she wasn't really sure if she could ever change. And, you know, she told me that she was actually frightened to, to try and change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, and so that was, and I didn't really, she didn't really disclose any of the major issues that mm. she had gone through. Um, and that was fine. My previous uh, the case study we spoke about was a bit more open, actually, and did sort of discuss a few things, but this, this other case study didn't. And that was fine, but it seemed to have a huge impact. Uh, from the feedback she gave me and the sort of when we were reviewing what she was able to do and how she felt now about going forward, there was a huge shift for her. Yeah. And, and that was great to see as well. So we talk about having these huge shifts in sort of like sort of getting down to the sort of the nitty gritty. What, 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 you know, what's she able to do now that she wasn't doing or how has she shifted uh, from your perception? So what's her life like now compared to what it was before she actually saw you? Well, she said that she now had a lot more uh, sort of objectivity and perspective on the past events. Yeah. But she could see them in the context of what really happened rather than how she felt about, uh, felt about yeah. what happened and how, her, how she had interpreted it, I guess, in a very negative way when she looked back as an adult and she was able to kind of uh, sort of see that from an adult's perspective, um, you know, or certainly a more experienced perspective, she realized that actually, you know, there was a reason that things had happened that way, or it, it was just one of those things. Um, and she realized, I suppose, that it wasn't as bad as she had remembered it. Yeah. And her feelings and emotions about it therefore changed. And she felt far more, um, objective about it and, and not so emotionally upset by it all Brilliant. and then she said that it has, has enabled her to think more differently you know, to think differently now about those events and then informed her about what she wants to happen next so excellent yeah, great excellent so now you're becoming you know an IMT practitioner and we always Ooh. say <laughs> it's really great we like it when people you know use IMT with other skills you're already doing, as we said, you're, uh, you know, you are a hypnotherapist as well, uh, and you have been working with some other people. Um, just out of interest, how do you now see yourself sort of going forward using IMT uh, with your clients? What is it you're going, what is it you're looking forward to doing? And so basically, how do you see IMT uh, sort of factoring into your, to your work? Well, I, what I see for myself at the moment, and I'm in the process of refining this, especially after your marketing talk last night, but I see myself offering a blended therapy sort of 
yeah. products, if you like. So, which will include always elements of solution focused hypnotherapy. It's a fantastic structure mm -hmm. that en empowers the client to really, you know, make changes for yeah. themselves. And, but within that, I think IEMT has a huge place because it can address so many of the issues and the reasons why a person feels that way and is that way, you yeah. know, how they're feeling and how they're being. So I see the solution focused hypnotherapy and other elements, uh, protocols that I use within hypnotherapy as bookcasing, book, no, bookending. Yeah, yes. Either sessions or a series of sessions yeah. with I, IEMT kind of in the center of it. And then uh, in order to, uh, you know, build rapport and um, a sort of, I don't know, a, an environment with which to get mm. the best for the client, bookending it with solution focused hypnotherapy and other sort of hypnotherapy and kinetic shift as and when yeah. I often bring that into my hypnotherapy sessions anyway, the kinetic shift. So yeah, yeah I see the IMT as being sort of the, the center bit and then I'm going to bookend it with hypnotherapy. And after our discussion today, um, I, I like your suggestions as well about how hypnosis can help in individual sessions. So I will be looking at that as well to add that in. Yeah, it's, so if people are wondering what, what we mean by that. So basically, so I, I'm trained in hypnosis and hypnotherapy. And what I do in my sessions, um, I will do the IMT work and then I'll create a pattern, a language pattern from the work that we have done. And I'll put the client into trance. And then this is more when I do in-person sessions. So I'm not, I don't really do it this online, but what I will then do is I will actually create a language pattern and record it, create an audio track for them and send it to them to listen to between the sessions and after the sessions as well. And I find that works really, really well. Cause I also do something called metaphors of movement, which uh, Andy Austin teaches. Well, so I do a small portion of it. I, 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 used, I got involved with that, <clears throat> excuse me, before it was, um, I don't even think it was called metaphors of movement. I think he just called it physical metaphor work or something. It's uh, I've got in on the ground floor, I think on that one. So again, I went to these experimental sessions and I, I've taken some elements of that, which have worked uh, really well. And so that's how I find, so with, with hypnosis, I, I was never a fan of right getting a script and reading, you know, the same script for like stops, you know. So what I do is I take the work that we actually do in the sessions, create my own script, make an MP3, for the client and then give it to the client to use uh, like I say, to, to really solidify everything we've done but i don't use hypnosis to, to to find the problems like i used to um i prefer to have people conscious and speaking with me and and with imt it's much more facilitating as opposed and sort of exploring a problem so imt is outcome free it's how we explore the problem and allowing the client to come to their own conclusions and their own changes and basically bringing their resources and knowledge from who they are today into past problems, basically. That's really kind of what we're doing. So, so um, we're going to bring this to a close. Uh, before we do, um, there are other therapists, also some people who haven't got any experience in therapy. I know you've actually done sort of quite a bit of training in your past. Um, they may have been exploring IMT, thinking this kind of sounds quite interesting. We might get involved with it. What do you have to say to those people who are watching this, who haven't yet decided to either train with me or, or train, you know, it doesn't matter where, anywhere else, but preferably with me. Um, what do you have to say to those people who are still on the fence? I would say do it. The training is very reasonably priced, I think. Mm -hmm. And not only will it give you a whole new technique to use within the IEMT context. So when you're doing IEMT sessions, you'll <clears throat> excuse me, have a very comprehensive toolkit to be able to use to, to help people. Um, it will also inform, if you are an existing therapist, it will inform how you work anyway. So even if you weren't even doing the IEMT as part of a session, it will inform and it already informs the way that I've been working. So that's a great sort of addition. And I think it's going to give you the tools to really be able to help more people and get to the 
crux of the reason why they are a certain way, why they be, you know, they act, they they uh, feel, and really make a impact on individuals' lives. And I think it will skyrocket a business as well. I'm really excited now. I've had on my website. IEMT coming soon because I, you know, I have to be very careful about how I advertise that. So yeah. I, I put a description of what it is and et cetera, but I wasn't um, obviously advertising myself as a practitioner. Yeah. I was a student practitioner. And, but now I'm really excited that I can say that I'm now a, you know, qualified practitioner. And I think it's I mean, even someone in one, a local networking group, I mentioned something, um, uh, on a post, I just commented on a post mm -hmm. that someone was having, I think it was body confidence issues with a client yeah. of theirs. And I mentioned, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, I'm a hypnotherapist, but I also have another, you know, I also practice IEMT. Mm. I think it might really help your client. And then another person, so the lady who ran the group, the, you know, the, the, and it's a thousand, I think it's a thousand members. It's a big group. Mm. And she said, is that the, um, the rapid eye movement thing? And I said, it is the eye movement thing, but they're not necessarily that rapid, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I actually think that IMT, the more of us who are out there talking about it, bringing brilliant results or getting brilliant yeah. results with our clients, it's going to become more and more well known. And so I think, yeah, now's the time to jump on board. Uh, absolutely. And what, what you'll find, hopefully, as well, is that when you're doing IMT with, with clients and your clients, People are so excited by it, by the changes they're getting. They tell people. They they will tell other people. So mm -hmm. you'll start to get a lot more referrals um, because with some therapy, for ex for example, your first client that you worked with, she'd had fifty sessions of CBT on a spider phobia, and there'd been no discernible change. Mm -hmm. She'd had two sessions with you. She's now doing gardening. <laughs> you know, and, and going in people's gardens. So if you were her friend and for the first, however many years, she didn't want to go out or be near any spiders. And then you don't see her for a couple of weeks. And then you, she's doing gardening and she's sort of much more calm about mm. spider. They're going to be like, what's, uh, what's happened here? <laughs> you know, cause that's quite a big shift, you know? Yeah. And it was really nice. And she did tell me that actually she'd gone to, um, you know she'd gone gone to someone's house and they sat in the garden yeah and you know a couple of people had said wow you know this is this is great you know yeah. it's so great to see you outside it's lovely to see you looking happier so it's not only um you the, the client will obviously hurt their behavior after having an IMT session will hopefully do some of your marketing for you as a therapist absolutely give them the tools give them the yeah. business cards give them the links yeah. <laughs> and honestly <laughs> yeah. that really is because again so like i say most of my work i don't do much client work anymore but the stuff which i do is it's all basically just referral only um because again the change that you get for people and in such a short space of time and these are not like short-term changes i just want to sort of go over this because people go well yeah they they feel good for a day no i felt that when i did my hypnosis and nlp kind of training at the end of the session you make someone feel great and then the next day they feel quite great but then that kind of diminishes you you've spoken to both of your clients that you've worked with you know several weeks after haven't you and their changes have continued yeah yeah so that's really important to remember is IMT is an opportunity to change. And then when, when they do that thing, they will then usually continue down that, that new path. Um, and when, and this is why IMT works brilliantly with coaching when you're changing the emotional and the identity stuff, then with like a technical thing. So learning a skill, your, your, you know, your results absolutely skyrocket. Anyway, Louise Bowditch Bowditch, uh, if people want to get in contact with you, what, where's the best place to find you online? So website is really easy because you don't have to pronounce it. You just have to write it. So it's uh, louisebowditch.com and it's the same for Instagram. And uh, I think it's Louise Bowditch UK on Facebook. Cool. Thank you very much and go and enjoy the sun. <laughs> I will. Later. Cheers. Thanks, Matt. Bye.